Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, find the town judge. We're given a town where there are n people labeled from one to n. So already this is kind of looking like a graph problem setup. And then if you read a little bit below, you can see, well, these in a graph would represent the vertices or the nodes. And these down here would represent the edges. But let's just read the problem first. It's possible that among these people, one of them is the town judge. We know that a town judge exists if these conditions are satisfied. The town judge trusts nobody. What does trust mean in the context of this problem? Well, we're given a second parameter, trust. It's an array of pairs. In this case, a pair A, B means that the person A trusts person B. So again, this is looking like a graph. But we are told that the town judge does not trust anybody. So the town judge cannot show up on this side of an edge. Second parameter is everybody except for the town judge trusts the town judge. So if we have n people and there exists a town judge, and I guess just reading the rest of this, if there is a town judge, there can only be one person that is the town judge. So if that's the case, then the town judge will have n minus one edges going into them because everybody except for themselves will trust them. And we have n people. We have to determine if a town judge exists, and if they do, we will return the label of that uh, judge, and we're given these labels. And if they do not exist, we return negative one. So the most simple thing, once you kind of determine that this is roughly a graph problem, we don't really need to do like a complex traversal like a DFS or a BFS. We kind of just need to check if these conditions are satisfied. Is there a person where the number of incoming edges is equal to n minus one and the number of outgoing edges from that person is equal to zero. Does a person like this exist? Well, the only way for us to know is to traverse all of the edges, aka like these trust pairs, and to determine that. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We'll take a look at this example down here. It's relatively simple, I will say, but basically we're gonna have two hash maps because we want to count the number of incoming edges for every single person and the number of outgoing edges for every single person. If we're given n equals three, that means the people are labeled from one, two to three. And now we will just go through the edges. The first edge is one, three. What does that tell us? One, three. That means the number of incoming edges for three should be incremented. It should be now set to one. Originally, let's assume these are all zeros for like the values. The number of outgoing edges for one is going to be set to one because we found one edge so far where one has an outgoing edge. So this will be incremented now to one. Next, let's go to the second edge. It's two, three. For this, the source node, the number of outgoing edges for that is gonna increase by one. And the number of incoming edges for three is gonna increase by one as well. So that's over here. Now it's gonna be set to two. Let's assume the rest of these are still zero and we have no more edges left to traverse. So now going through this, we are gonna check for every single person from one to N, we're gonna check, do they satisfy these conditions? Let's check for person one is the number of incoming edges equal to N minus one. No, it's definitely not. So one is not the person, it's not the town judge. What about two? Is the number of incoming edges equal to N minus one? Nope. And if we were to check the other case, like the outgoing edges is not equal to zero either. But now when we go to the last person, three, are they the town judge? Well, N minus one is three minus one, which is definitely equal to two. That's good. Do they have the number of outgoing edges set to zero? Yep. So this is the town judge. So as you can see from this solution, the time complexity is gonna be roughly big O of N, or let's say V plus E, where I'm gonna say V is the number of vertices or nodes, and E is the number of edges, because that's how many edges we have to traverse. The size of trust could be different than the size of N. And in terms of space complexity, it's gonna be big O of V, because we're gonna have one hash map here, which is gonna have the same number of nodes that we're given. We're gonna have a second hash map as well, but that doesn't change the space. 
there's one last thing that you might be thinking. What if there are multiple people that actually satisfy this condition? There's multiple people where that is satisfied because they tell us that for there to be a town judge, there has to be exactly one person that satisfies these properties. Well, my claim to you is that if a single person satisfies these conditions, then by definition, there cannot be a second person who also satisfies those conditions. Let me quickly explain. If we have a person such as this one, where we have n minus one incoming edges and zero outgoing edges, and they don't explicitly say it here, but they say it at the bottom of the description that there cannot be any duplicates in the trust array. There cannot be any duplicate edges. If that's true, how can there possibly be a second town judge that has n minus one people pointing to them? How can it be possible? A judge can't point to themselves. And we know that this person, this town judge is not pointing at anybody. So at most, the second town judge would only have n minus two incoming edges. If that's not enough to convince you, how can we possibly have two people that have zero outgoing edges and have one person that has n minus one incoming edges assuming no duplicates? How could that be possible? We need every other person to be pointing at the town judge. How can there possibly be a person that has zero outgoing edges if they're not the town judge? It's just not possible. So that's why there can only be one town judge. This condition here is pretty much redundant, to be honest. So now let's code it up. Just like in the drawing explanation, I'm gonna have two hash maps. I'm gonna declare them with default dict. That just makes it a little bit easier to handle the out of bounds case. So incoming and outgoing, they're going to be initialized like this. So we're gonna go through every pair in trust. In Python, you can unpack them pretty easily. Each pair is gonna be unpacked into two, the source node and the destination node. Of course, the source node tells us which node now has an outgoing edge. So here we're going to set this equal to itself plus one. But with this, we'd get a key does not exist error if we were not using a default dict. But with a default dict, this will actually be set to zero even if the key doesn't exist. So that's why we used a default dict. And I'm also going to rewrite this like that just for simplicity. Now we do the same thing with incoming. The destination node now has one more node that is incoming to it. So the number of incoming edges to this increased by one. Now we are going to go through every single node, i in range from one to n, and in Python we have to do n plus one, it's not inclusive. And now we check is the number of outgoing edges for i equal to zero, and is the number of incoming edges for i equal to n minus one. If that's the case, return i, we know only one solution can possibly exist. If it doesn't return negative one after we check every single node. So this is the solution, I'll run it, and as you can see on the left, yes, it does work. And also, when you determine that there's only one possible solution, you realize that we actually can use a single hash map. And instead of counting the number of incoming or outgoing edges, we can count the delta. By delta, I mean this, the total number of incoming edges minus the total number of outgoing edges. Of course, we know for the solution value, this would end up being equal to n minus one, which is the number of incoming edges, minus zero, which is the number of outgoing edges. So basically this would be equal to n minus one. Now, is there any other node where the number of incoming minus outgoing is gonna be equal to n minus one? No, it's not really possible because even if they had n minus one incoming edges, which is literally not possible, at most they could have n minus two. And we know for sure every single node is gonna have at least one outgoing edge. So the max value for all the others would basically be this, n minus three. So nothing is ever gonna be n minus one except for the town judge. So therefore we can use a single hash map, we can do this. We can say for the incoming, we want to increase it by one. For outgoing here, we want to decrement it. 
by one so that we can get this equation incoming is added and outgoing is subtracted. And then down here, all we need to check is basically get rid of this and then just check delta is equal to n minus one. This doesn't really improve the time complexity or anything. I guess it just saves you half of the space, but it doesn't change the big O space complexity. But running the code, you can see that this also works. It did save us some space. The runtime is pretty random though. I think if I ran it again, it would be better. If you found this helpful, check out Neat Code IO, especially if you're preparing for coding interviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.